Hi, I'm Siobhan. I'm one of the crowd in crowdsourcing, one of the citizens in citizen science. Your institution may be thinking of setting up a crowdsourcing project. If so, be really sure before you commit. It takes time and effort to properly design, to launch, and most importantly, to maintain a successful project. Don't waste my time or your limited resources with a dead-end activity. You want your results to improve your organisation, to enrich your content, and in some way, better your volunteers' lives. If you do decide to do a crowdsourcing project, I've got three suggestions on how to encourage people like me to participate. Firstly, be generous with content. If you're generous with content, I'll be generous with my time. Allow me to reuse what I helped to create. So if I'm transcribing, I'll want to be able to download that transcription. If I'm tagging, I'll want to be able to reuse those images in Wikipedia or in a blog. Licence copyright as freely as you can. For me, the more generous you are, the better. If you're lucky, your volunteers will reuse your data in ways you haven't even thought of. Also, I consider this generosity when I'm deciding whether to donate my time. It's a competitive market out there for volunteers. If you're generous with your content, I'm much more likely to volunteer for you. I get very frustrated if content is licensed restrictively, and if I get frustrated, I go on to another project. I want you to let me have fun, to play with the data, and ideally to reuse it however I like. My favourite museum in New Zealand gives a great example of this mindset. The Auckland War Memorial Museum have licensed their specimen images under the CC BY 4.0 licence. Their generosity with their content has resulted in me engaging with, reusing and in turn improving their data. I've tagged their images on their website, I've uploaded them into Wiki Commons for use on Wikipedia, and in doing this I've discovered errors and omissions on their database. So I've emailed them, helping them to improve. What you call engagement, I regard as playing. And if I play, I hopefully will enrich things. I play because their content is generously licensed and easy to reuse. My second tip is to be generous with trust. Trust your volunteers. Most of us want to start immediately and learn by doing. We will not read the instructions until we hit a problem. <laughs> so design for this. We mean well, but we will make mistakes. Don't confuse this with malice. Also, have easy tasks for beginners. I'll become more expert the more I do for you. Have ways for me to level up. Once I've mastered a skill, I'll want to have a new challenge. Try and give me a way to learn and progress. Do this and you can create your own enthusiastic experts. Also, these different levels of difficulty are useful in another way. They'll encourage me to do more. Easy tasks I'll do while sitting in front of the TV. More creative tasks I'll do with nothing else to distract me. If a project can't provide this level up experience, talk to your volunteers. Encourage them to create it for themselves by giving them the ability to reuse the data and content. The Biodiversity Heritage Library provides a great example of this level up concept. They've got a large set of images in Flickr. They want the crowd to tag those images with the scientific names. Their instructions explain how to start at a very basic level, basically tagging the name on the actual image. But they also go on to explain how to level up, how to do research into the current species name in order to tag the more challenging images. The Biodiversity Heritage Library also encourages their volunteers to participate in other crowdsourcing activities. So they provide links to their Zooniverse project, Science Gossip, and also their um, text and OCR correction games. They point volunteers to the Smithsonian Transcription Centre. 
All these activities not only provide different levels of difficulty, but also a variety of tasks. And variety really is the spice of volunteering life. My last tip is to be generous with time. Spend time and effort creating a volunteer community. The most successful crowdsourcing projects engage with their volunteers. Volunteer communities don't appear spontaneously. You have to design for it in your project and then spend time cultivating it. So talk to your volunteers, encourage the efforts, think about what you can do for the crowd rather than what the crowd can do for you. Crowdsourcing isn't about getting free labor. It's about being open to your volunteers' ideas and contributions. It's about collaboration, and collaboration requires communication. So give me a point of contact if I've got questions. Listen to your volunteers. We can help you improve your project. If I love a project, I want to discuss it. I want to share the things I learn, both with other volunteers and the people behind the project. Have a way to make this happen. It can be something as simple, simple as setting up a Twitter account. Give feedback about progress. Explain how da the data generated is being used. Communication will reward me for my time and motivate me to do more. The Smithsonian Transcription Centre is a great example of this ethos in action. They're very engaged and supportive of their volunteers on Twitter and Facebook. They have a website with a feedback button allowing volunteers to help improve their centre. They give a roundup of recent news, reporting on progress of projects, and any relevant research using the data created. They reward volunteers by frequently holding either Facebook Live or Google Plus Hangouts. These museum curators or scientists, this allows uh, museum curators or scientists involved in the various trans transcription projects to have contact with volunteers. So in conclusion, design your crowdsourcing project so I and others like me can enjoy your content. Trust your volunteers to help them help you. Build a social network containing volunteers and the people behind the project. If a crowdsourcing project is designed correctly, it can en enrich in volunteers' lives, the institution that runs the project, and the content we are all engaged with. Thank you.